The journey is usually the part that you remember anyways. <laughs> oh, uh, the vocal fry. <clears throat> how come you claim to be 5'9", even though you're like 5'5"? Five five? I don't know, how tall are you? You're 5'9"? I'm actually 5'9". Okay, come over here, let's see. She's a 10, but she has pronouns in her Instagram bio. I think she's a zero. She's got pronouns in her Instagram bio. And I'm not worried about the bio if I see pronouns. I'm worried about what's underneath of her pants. If you've got pronouns, you got to stay far away from me. I don't do men. Unfollow, delete, maybe block. No, no, no. Then, then I just got to ask post-op, pre-op. I don't want to know. I just want to know how to go away. This is, a, this is a fair assessment of the situation. I will ask you how old you are, okay? Because you're young enough that it's probably not insulting to ask you. So I'm 22, so I'm probably only 90, right? No, why aren't you 60? Why aren't you 60? <laughs> and why, why can't you identify as 60? Why, what, what is the problem with you identifying as 60? <laughs> you're right. Age is significantly less important than gender. You can't magically change your gender. You can't magically change your sex. You can't magically change your age. Is it okay to date a guy for money? Yeah. Why? You only live once. Okay. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with being a gold digger? No. Okay. And that's okay. Sure. So if I wanted to date you just because you had big tits, that would be fine too. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I don't know. The twins are twin and today. <laughs> Yeah, I mean. So why'd you cover him up? Cause now you're making me insecure. But I mean, you had him all the whole night. Don't cover him up when you when when I put you on the spot now. Let him free. All right. Yeah, that's some awkwardness. Yeah, that's some awkwardness. I, I promise you, if he had asked her at the very beginning that question, she'd been very offended. But after she said gold digging was okay, now she was now she was in a bit of a trap of of her own making. Speak of these Western traditional morality and values. I think it's a fair assumption to say that most of these values are Christian values. I would like to just ask a question. How could you claim to be a proponent of these values when you're on the record saying that, that Jesus Christ was a rebel who died for his troubles? This is on the record. Okay, so the answer is I'm a Jew. The Western values that I'm talking about have their roots in the Old Testament, which is a thing that I put on the nonfiction shelf along with the Christians. The only question is where we all place the New Testament. Right? You guys put that on the nonfiction shelf, I'm a Jew. So if I, if I didn't, then presumably, then I would be a Christian. What I was talking about with regard to Jesus, I was asked about what the Jewish view of Jesus is. I'm not telling y'all what to think about Jesus. I think y'all should go to church. I think that you guys should believe in your religion. I think that you should advocate for your religion. I think that you should become, if you are a Christian, good Christian men and women who bring up your kids in good Christian ways. I'm a Jew, so obviously we have a bit of a difference of opinion, and we will find out at the end of the story who is right and who is wrong. And there may be a surprise waiting for me. I don't know. This is effed up beyond belief. It's scary because you can't, a nine year old, like a fucking 17 year old doesn't know. That was the thing about that Ruby Rose girl. She was saying that when she was young, when she was a teenager, she wanted to be a man. She wanted to be transgender. And that she had gone through that phase, and now she's so happy that she didn't do anything. Right. Well, yeah. they, they say that 80% that of kids who experience any sort of gender dysphoria as children grow out of it. So when you have a society that reinforces it, and then in Canada, they're now having, they're passing laws now that say that if a kid says, you know, you have a girl, and the girl says, I'm a boy, and she's three, that the government can come into your house and take the kid. Because obviously, if, if, you, if you don't want to humor the kid and get the kid treatment or surgery or, or hormone blockers, then you're obviously doing something wrong to the kid. This is just... It's insane. First of all, if anyone tried to do that with my kid, I would meet them at the door with a gun. I mean, that, 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 this, is, this is the kind of stuff where you're talking legit civil war. Like when, when you say that the government can take people's kids from them because the government knows better than you how to parent your kids on basic things like, are you a boy or a girl? Do you know who the current vice president is? Um, Hillary Clinton. Say again? Hillary Clinton. I don't know. Yes. Can you name three countries in North America? U.S. Good. China. Two. One more. Um. One more. Europe, I guess. No. Is it Europe? 
Yes, three. Nice. Uh, if it's Friday in New York City, then what day of the week is it in Mexico? Friday. Hey. Tuesday. Yes, you almost messed up. <laughs> oh, our country is finished. Yeah, that study, the American IQs, they've been declining. I believe that, yes. I am wearing the pants. He's wearing the skirt. We're both gay. He's pregnant. I have two girlfriends. It's 2021. Okay, this is like a really f***ed up algebra problem. I'm a mathematician and a physicist here, a double major, and I also just won the most prestigious award in the country to pursue research at any institution I want, the National Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship. So I think I'm pretty qualified to say that most of what you're saying is based on old data. For example, gender identity disorder, that's the DSM-4, bro. We use the DSM-5 now for psychologists to be able to talk about- I literally about... cited the DSM-5 in the speech, and it's called gender dysphoria, which is I literally that I used throughout the speech, not gender you identity disorder. You sound like a disorder, bozo, bro. And you get no p- and you can't even make your wife wet, bro, so what's good? I'm a mathematician and a physicist. You cannot so tell what me- the, So I have a question. And also, you're not a biologist. So I have a question. I'm 20. As a mathematician a, and a physicist, what in the hell do you know about human biology? And you got your law degree from Harvard. What do you know about biology? If your logic is so flawed as a mathematician and a physicist, I would suggest that whichever institution gave you an award, re- revoke it immediately. nonsense. The transgender suicide rate is 40%. It is 40%. And according to the according to the Anderson School at UCLA, it makes no difference. There's a study that came out last year. It makes no difference, virtually no difference, statistically speaking, as to whether people recognize you as a transgender person or not, which suggests there's a very high comorbidity between transgenderism, whatever that mental state may be, and suicidality. That has nothing to do with how society treats Do you think it could be because of their bullied at school? No, I don't think that, I do not think that the discrepancy, I do not think the discrepancy, first of all, I'm against bullying of any sort, okay? The idea that that somebody would beat somebody up is terrible, okay? As somebody who's viciously bullied in high school, I'm not a fan of bullying. But the idea that the the normal suicide rate across the United States is 4%, the suicide rate in the transgender community is 40%. The idea that 36% more transgender people are committing suicide because people people are mean to them is ridiculous. It's not true and it's not backed by any science that anyone can cite. It is pure conjecture. In fact, it's not even true that bullying causes suicide according to a lot of studies. The, 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 for example, in the black community, where the idea is supposedly that America is a racist society, blacks are bullied a lot, okay, in the black community, black community has significantly lower suicide rates than in the white community. In fact, in third world countries, the suicide rate is significantly lower than in first world countries. Suicide actually seems to be a privilege of the upper classes, if you actually look at it from a financial perspective. So the idea that suicidality is directly a result of people like me saying, no, men are not women and women are not men, it, it, it's, it's, it's not true. It's also... So you think it doesn't impact their identity at all or their depression or how they feel about themselves? I think the idea that you're going to sacrifice the entire society's proper definition of sex because you think that there is a, a in, in legal terms, somebody with an eggshell skull, meaning that somebody who has a pre-existing condition that makes them more susceptible to criticism, that that is not a way to run a society. You can't sacrifice truth because some people are going to actually suffer because of the truth. Plus, there's no evidence whatsoever that the suicide rate would go down in the transgender community in any market way if people just started pretending that men were women and women were men. We're trying that experiment now. We'll find out whether it works. So far, no evidence. Have you talked to a group of trans people at all instead of this group of, like, white people? I'm more than happy to talk to a group of any people who will have me, but usually they protest me. people like Andrew Tate got such traction. Yes, so uh, what I've said about Andrew Tate is that I would say that 75% of Andrew Tate's diagnoses Mm -hmm. of the problem are pretty correct. Yeah, I agree. And then I would say that a lot of his prescriptions are completely wrong. Yeah. Right? So, so he, will, he will say, men have lost their role in the world. And then what he will model is cam girls. Mm. It's like, well, that, that's not actually the solution. But what you're saying about the problem of men losing their role and men needing to be masculine and men needing to want to win and men needing to cultivate uh, an ability to, to go out and succeed and thrive in the world, all of that is 100% true. I just think that he himself on a personal level wasn't providing a model of that. To me, a model of that is a guy who is married, who has kids, who lives in the community, who betters the community he lives in, who hires people, who creates a business. Like, these are the things that, historically speaking, did define manhood. And now they no longer define manhood. And men well, are left I think that you can chart the moment of deterioration for the moment James Bond started crying. 
<laughs> right, it's like, you know, you take even that, take even Bond and emasculate him. It's like he has to be in touch with his feelings. Why? Nathan, no, I'm not going to turn around and flex my butt. Come on, Nathan, cut that out. Cut that out. This is illegal. This is sexual harassment. Nathan says, I'm a conservative filmmaker trying to get into Hollywood. Any advice? Yeah, first of all, don't request uh, me to clench my butt. My general thoughts on the Britney Griner trade are, are several fold. One, Britney Griner is an American citizen. We should do everything we can to bring American citizens home. Two, when you have the White House press secretary saying it's particularly important to bring this particular American citizen home because she is an LGBTQ woman of color, it starts to go, why? Well, seriously, why? Like, why, why, why does that make her specifically more important to bring home? Like, is it more important than Paul Whelan? More important than the 40 to 50 other people who are American citizens being held in captivity around the world? Like, I don't know what makes Brittany Griner more special than they are. She was certainly victimized by the Russian government, which was using her as a pawn. If you are going to dictate to me that I'm supposed to pretend, I'm supposed to pretend, that men are women and women are men, no. My answer is no. I'm not going to, I'm not going to modify basic biology because it threatens your subjective sense of what you are. Okay, but you're still saying these kids should like, not be accepted because they don't really fit in either place? They can't just like... I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. Yeah, I mean, well, okay. In the name Boy Scouts. <laughs> Well, if anyone tried to do that with my kid, I would meet them at the door with a gun. I mean, that, 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 this, is, this is the kind of stuff where you're talking legit civil war. Like when, when you say that the government can take people's kids from them because the government knows better than you how to parent your kids on basic things like, are you a boy or a girl? That, that's going to get violent pretty quickly. If you send someone to my door with a gun saying, I'm taking your daughter from you because your daughter says she's a boy at school and, you, and you're not going to take her to a psychiatrist to start her transitioning process. Oh. You can call me out on being a liberal snowflake or whatever no, about my feelings, um, but then you, in the middle of your speech, you, I mean, I think this was hate speech, you made fun of transgenders, um, so... Well, I made fun of one person who grabbed me by the back of the neck and threatened me with violence, to be fair. I mean, yes, but also Caitlyn Jenner, and it's, you seem to be, you, no, 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 I don't want, no, no. You made it, you were clearly making jokes at the expense of transgender people, so my question is, where do you draw the line between being a mensch and clearly offending people. Like, where do you draw the line? Okay, so uh, for me, so so for me, so for me, if I, if I if I coldly and clearly state a fact, and you're offended by the fact, that's not me being responsible for offending you. That's me saying a fact and you being offended. As far as me making jokes about Zoe Tur, my general rule is that if somebody grabs me by the back of the neck and threatens me with violence on national television, I have the right to make fun of them. Women's sports are highly competitive, often can compete with men at the same level and win. What, what sports? Like a woman playing against a man tennis player. And in 1998, Serena and Venus Williams did exactly that. Or tried to. They challenged any professional male player to a match as long as they were outside of the top 200. The challenge was accepted by Karsten Brosh, who was ranked 203rd in the world. And the match was a close one. He beat Serena 6-1 and Venus 6-2. It's a completely different sport. The men are a lot faster. I love to play women's tennis. I only want to play girls because I don't want to be embarrassed. Yes, that is a true story. And it is amazing that we all have to pretend that this is not the case. It's clearly the case. Come on. And so, Ben, I read your article today, and it was I was shocked by the language you used. You were, you were saying that it's time She's for the right call the police to right fight. Now. Yeah, no, but you read his evidence, column. Evidence, evidence, evidence. All this is is screaming and feelings. How about like a shred of evidence, even for the incidents that actually evidence. happened the in Missouri reports. that drove this... Really, really, really? What, where was the police report Ms. exactly when it came to, for example, the first N-word incident that led all of this? There was no police report on any of that. In the second incident, at the N-word at the University of Missouri, the administration investigated and the kid's under investigation. Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate no it. No really. problem, my friend. Really. <laughs> Shalom. So my question is, um, you noted that Western civilization was built upon Judaism or Judeo-Christian values, but would you concede that other civilizations, such as the Islamic civilization, especially during its golden age, and uh, Chinese civilization and Indian civilization, which were very economically successful uh, as late as the 17th and 18th century, would you concede that their failure ultimately stems from uh, Western imperialism and the exploitation of these regions, uh, which were successful prior to the West conquering and then exploiting them for their raw materials? No. <laughs> so, uh, no, historic, historically, I would not concede that. So the Islamic world didn't fail because the West was involved with the Islamic world. The Islamic world failed because it fell into fundamentalism. Between 800 and 1400, as you know, the Islamic world was responsible for the preservation of a lot of the Greek literature that I'm very fond of. Uh, it was intellectually, it was intellectually thriving. Uh, there was economic growth. It was an attempt to balance fundamental principles and reason.
and then Islamism, and then is, Islam fell into a, a form of fundamentalism that tried to rule out reason in favor of theocracy, and that has continued, unfortunately, until today. As far as the, the failure of economic growth in places like China, China was successful as a mercantilist state in the same way that some Western countries were successful as mercantilist states. But what has made the world different is not mercantilist states. What has made the world different is a fundamental recognition of the alienability of individual human labor. And that is what has allowed the West to grow beyond China. So the, the, China is still a very powerful country, economically speaking, but it has not embraced the principle of individual human liberty still. And that's a, that's a serious problem. So I don't think that imperialism can really explain the failures of other civilizations to grow beyond a certain point or, or stagnation at a certain point. I think that's putting a little bit too much, historically speaking, on the, on those civil, uh, uh, not enough on the civilizations themselves, uh, and too much on military conquest of, I mean, how long did the military conquest of China last? China was in control of its own fate before and after. So the, so the, the conquest of China, including of Hong Kong, lasted, what, approximately 100 years? 100, 130 years? Mainland China, roughly up until 1949, when the uh, Maoists took over Hong Kong right. up to like 1997. And, right, and so, well, right. so Hong, and by the way, Hong Kong is the, was the most successful economic area of China. Right, which is so, so if we're talking about economic stagnation, Hong Kong's actually a terrible example. It's a great example of how adopting Western values in cultures that were not originally Western has led to massive economic growth. It's also true of free markets in Singapore and in South Korea uh, and in every other place that has adopted Western values with regard to free markets and property ownership. So the, the conquest of those areas may be unjustifiable on an imperialist level, but from an economic growth standpoint, it was very good for Hong Kong that Hong Kong was conquered by the West, just, just in pure GDP growth terms. As far as the conquest of China, you're right. From the, the, the opium wars, uh, which began, what, the 1850s uh, until about 1949, so it's about a 100-year gap right there, that is not what leads China to be a, a, la a laggard in terms of, of economic growth. It certainly is not what leads China to be a laggard in terms of human freedom. There was a great lack of human freedom in China far beyond the West, uh, in leading up to leading up to Western imperialism and then following Western imperialism. So the question is, the expansion of Western values, are those good for countries or bad for countries? That's not a justification of imperialism, which can, in fact, lead to the subjugation of peoples, obviously. Um, but I'm, I'm loath to blame every, every problem in every part of the developing world on Western imperialism, and I don't think the record quite bears that out. Is that fair? If you espouse to the idea that Jesus was born of a virgin birth, then Jesus could not have had male chromosomes. Therefore, Jesus had only female chromosomes and presented as masculine. So, Jesus was non-binary. And in terms of male and female, and the Hebrew, the word that was used for and, describes a spectrum. Male and female and everything in between. I am not an expert on Christian theology, but my understanding is that the idea is that Jesus was both fully human and also fully God. Is this correct? Christians, anywhere around here? Yup. Yes, this is correct. Okay. If that is indeed the case, then Jesus would have had to have the full chromosomal slate in order to be fully human. This means that if Jesus was male, he was male. That's a man. Now, let's talk about the, the bizarre invocation of Hebrew here. There is no word for and in Hebrew. There's a prefix in Hebrew for and. That's the letter vav. And in Hebrew means the same thing that and in English does. It means this thing and that thing. It does not mean a full spectrum. That is incredibly silly. That, that is bad Hebrew grammar. Before I ask my question, so are your... Do you come from Holocaust survivors, or are you a Jewish family that didn't? Uh, so my great-great-grandparents arrived here. A lot of our extended family was killed in the Holocaust, but, but our immediate Your great-great-grandparents, but not your grandparents. Right. Oh, do you have friends whose grandparents were Holocaust survivors or anything like that? Of course, that? many of them. Yeah, I've written, I've, I've, helped, uh, I've helped write memoirs of Holocaust survivors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their families are kind of messed up, right? Uh, like... My family is very messed up. I mean, if you they, go through they a teach, trauma like the Holocaust, they, I would imagine they teach that. that trauma between generations. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, trauma very often in a lot of circumstances is passed down. I mean, I know some kids of Holocaust survivors who are now fantastic and some who didn't. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay. you are officially woke. That is what wokeness is about. It's like, uh, you know, people's grandparents or their Great grandparents were slaves. Well, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. Guys, Fuck I, you! I'm, I'm talking. talking. Guys, I, I actually want to hear. No, no, I want. I want to hear. I, no, this it's okay. Guy, it's okay. I, I, I want. I want to. I want to hear. hear the, let's at least hear the argument. Let's. Okay. So let's let's hear it. Let's hear it. Go. What he wants to hear. Me. I do want to hear it. It's fine. Let he him go. Let, hear let's hear it. Come on. I'll just. You know, so I'm ex talking. explain Come how on. that's woke. So I mean, the whole thing is is like, 
Oh, let's see. So during Silent Cal, Calvin Coolidge's administration, do you know about like the great Mississippi flood back in the 1930s? I understand that American history is filled with racial evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that causes some intergenerational trauma, which affects people's ability to be you okay, know, so let me, effective, let me, okay. things like that. Fine. So let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, so if the idea is that history has consequences, of course that's true. That's not yeah, wokeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not wokeness. What wokeness suggests is that fundamental institutions in American society no, are so... No, it doesn't. Yes, I, it 100% I ran, does. I ran Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I helped organize her volunteers around here. I am, I am a representative of wokeness. Okay, well, and that's just, I mean, this is all it is. Well, I mean, like, I mean, I... I, you know, I when, hope I, that, when I uh, went to go get my first tattoo, I, I, the guy I, I, had lightning bolts and 88s tattooed on his neck. And as a Jewish person, um, that's really messed up. It's, so it's basically a threat. There are, there are racist people who exist. The argument that you're making, and I'm going to close with this because this is going in weird directions and I don't really no, want to... No, no, no. It's not I, going I don't, in I don't really want to get... No, just hold this up is, a second. This I, let you, I let you get out your arguments and that's, now it's time for me to respond because I let you say Okay, I'll let you respond, but... No, I no, no, think, not but. Now's my turn. You, you are not characterizing but, what I'm saying accurately. Now, now, it's, now it's my turn. Your, your, yeah. your definition is inaccurate. The reason your definition is inaccurate is because any sentient human being would acknowledge that history has consequences. Right. But if the idea is, but that's not what wokeism is. Wokeism is a different thing. Wokeism suggests that all inequalities of today are attributable to not only historic injustices, but also continuing injustices in the now. And I've that never all disparities heard anybody describe like that, but a conservative. Not just that, not a just conservative that. is the not only just, person. Not just, and I want to know why. Why is it that conservatives are the only people who define it like that? Why, why are conservatives the okay, only okay, people? Okay, okay. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to stop here because this is going nowhere. But What's up? I, I, we're, I'm gonna have to stop with this with you because this is going nowhere. All I'm going well, to say is this. To no, sum up, I, I just I, am I, trying I, to understand I your perspective. On it. Just one more second. On a, it's. On you a, say on a, on a fundamental you on a, a fundamental level, you're shifting definitions to avoid the consequences of your own argument. And if the idea is, and, and, fi and, is and final point, speech. and final this point, is being censored. and final point, if you are going you to hold on, if you are also, also, just final point to sum up there. Democrats and Republicans use black people and minorities as pawns for the political gain. Joe Biden, for one, is a complete racist and has done nothing for my community. Kamala Harris is a complete traitor and added to the incarceration rates of my people and has the audacity rep to represent us. Do you believe in the notion that parties, Democrat and Republican, are using us for their own selfish gain to move their party forward? So I think that pretty much all political parties are built to use people for their own particular selfish gains in order to gain office. I mean, this is right. what political parties do. I don't think that's unique to any one political party. Okay. Uh, I will say that if a party does not serve the interests of the population it purports to serve, then the use becomes more obvious and more venal, more corrupt and, and more terrible. I think that you know, the, the general way that parties ought to be appealing to people is not on the basis of race. This is why I think that the Democratic Party's appeal to black Americans is far uglier than the Republican Party's appeal to black Americans. I don't think that you see the Republican Party appealing to, quote unquote, the black community as qua the black community or saying, as Joe Biden once suggested, that if you don't vote Democrat, you're not black. Exactly. Right? That, that's, that's the sort of statement exactly. you really only see in the Democratic Party. Uh, How does your view of transgender issues work when scientific anti-realism as a concept exists? You're going to have to explain that one. All right, so scientific anti-realism is the concept that when you see me, you see, you know, my skin, my hands, everything about me, but you do not see my cells, you do not see my atoms, you do not see the things that make up the things, they are just physical. So there is no really true way to prove, other than by hitting me, obviously, um, that I am right here, if it is only us two talking. Um, so therefore, this would apply to um, any gendering things, including intersex, um, which can have an XX or XY chromosome and have androgen or um, estrogen insensitivity. Um, so, uh, so I just need you to narrow this down. Is yeah, the argument what that I'm things trying... that, that we don't understand the nature of things because we don't have microscopes yeah. and therefore well, we can't determine sex? I, I would like to narrow it down to um, we cannot fully identify a gender of a person right when we see them, so therefore um, I believe that it is not within my own individual liberty to gender that person. Okay, so 
Okay, so, you, so the, here's my problem with that particular argument. The answer is that in 99.8%, 99.9% of cases, you absolutely can gender somebody based on looking at them. Like, really. If, and if you're going to use intersex people as an example of not being able to do that, this does not obviate the biological duality of sex upon which all progeneration is based for all of human history and for all mammalian species. So intersex people do not invalidate the concept of sex as a generality. Intersex people are people who have a biological anomaly. And by the way, in most cases of intersex, those people still manifest as either a male or a female. So the, the, the idea that intersex exists does not invalidate the idea that there is a male and that there is a female, or that in, the, the, in nearly all cases, I can tell the difference between a male and a female. Again, I'm not saying, by the way, that if you can show me your chromosomal charts that you are actually not a male, when, you say that, when I say that you're a male, that I should stick with that biological objective standard. Like, my, my perception of you, in other words, is subject to my correct enunciation of an objective standard. So the objective standard, here's the, here's the deal. For all of human history, there was an objective standard between male and female. It was, for, the most, for, for nearly all of human history, out of partial ignorance and partially because this is usually true, it was out of genetic, it was out of simply looking at people's genetics. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics? Or well, no? Well, no, what no. are your genetics? I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now or you'll go home in an ambulance. So, so he reached over, grabbed me by the back of the neck and said, if, if you don't cut that out, I'll send you home in an ambulance. To which I have to say, my, my first mental response was that doesn't even make sense. You don't go home in an ambulance. But, <laughs> the, but the, <laughs> <laughs> Serena Williams, she's right. great. Serena Williams is great and all. But if Serena Williams were competing, he said she's the best female player ever. And they were like, well, why not just the best player ever? And he's like, because she's a, she's a woman. Like, if she were a man, she'd get her ass kicked. And everyone was like, no, how dare you? Right. There is something called the universal tennis ranking. She would rank in the mid-ranks of college male players if she were a man. And Serena Williams had said like five years ago, no, I never want to play with like Andy Roddick. He'd kill me. She, she actually did this. There was a 200th ranked man in the world who she, she wanted to just warm up with. And they, they played a, like just a, a normal match for, a, a, he won 6-1, 6 nothing, right? And he, was, and he was like ranked 200th in the world. And the only shock was that he dropped a, he dropped a point to her.